something. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's begin today by talking about the government's plans to curb executive pay and boardroom excesses. Theresa May has said she wants to stop an irresponsible minority of private firms amid widespread anger following the collapse of the high street chain BHS. The proposals which are being published in a green paper for consultation include forcing companies to publish pay ratios that show the difference in earnings between the chief executive and an average employee. Other measures include changing the way companies consult shareholders when settling pay. Here's the Business Secretary, Greg Clark, speaking earlier. The concern has been uh, that the, the level uh, of chief executive pay uh, has risen beyond the level of performance of the, the companies and, uh, and beyond what ordinary workers uh, are paid. So I think it's right to, to reform the system so that shareholders can have a much tougher role uh, in making sure that the right pay is paid. Greg Clark there. Digby Jones, how much more should the CEO of a company earn than their average employee? I don't know. And I think anybody, politician, media, or put someone like me actually says they do know, trade unions, uh, they haven't got a clue. What I do know are two things. You've got to take deserve out of it. Because nurses deserve more money, mm. but the country can't afford to pay them. And that's about performance. And that's about performance. But you've Is got to take... Because many a CEO will say, but just a minute, I've risen shareholder value by this much. The company's doing really well. Shareholders, pensions, yours and mine, mm. everybody else. I deserve more. You probably do, actually. It's not the point. The example that people in positions of receipt of cash have got to set in this difficult time is more important. But I don't think... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased they're doing something. You are. So you uh, broadly I, welcome it. Because I do, did, but because I just think if you're going to try and get formulaic about it, your problem right. is going to so be... Right, so you're not in favour then of setting a, a pay ratio because if you look at the figures, and you will know, um, executive pay has spiralled oh, compared so to the to pay all, of an average employee. Yeah, yeah. And so if you don't have a formula that perhaps is accompanied by sanctions, then you've got cases of a CEO earning sometimes 125 times more than oh, the average and, employee. And which is unacceptable. Right. And, and we but all how know, do you stop it? Well, we all know what's unacceptable. It's going to be all the stuff at the border, isn't it? And, and if you start putting in limits and stuff, you're going to get people either side of the border and all of that. I'm, I'm far more interested, actually, in, the, in, in shareholder activism because too many of the of the fund managers in the city just let this go through on the nod because the share price is going up. So should you put workers on board? Uh, no, well, no, that's a totally different matter. <laughs> now, why I wouldn't do that is nothing to do with this, because I think a worker on a board, um, uh, especially if they were um, from diverse and minority groups inside business, would be good role models. They'd be great for getting mm. glass ceilings broken. They'd get to inspire. But the problem you've got is confidentiality. I chair a lot of boards. And one of the problems... Couldn't you deal with that? Well, on, on one or two private companies I chair, I've got, I've, I've got some worker participation and, and, and um, involvement. And uh, we, have a real, we have a real problem sometimes in, in dealing with the fact that one of the jobs they're there for is representative, mm. i.e. go out and tell them all, and there's lots of stuff, and of course, that you don't want to No, and Theresa May now is seems to tricky. be talking about representation, not uh, actually um, mandating companies that, to That's tricky, more. actually. But, but the, the drive to try and get the reputation of business better in this nation so we create more wealth in a way that people understand and are with it in this time when the nation's got to pull together, I think the... The general thrust of what they're after is absolutely right. I just worry about one or two of the ways they're going to go about it. All right, let's leave it there. Now, British companies have been told they'll have to justify levels of executive pay and a new consultation plan unveiled by the business secretary, Greg, Greg Clark. He said big firms would have to reveal the difference between the amount earned by chief executives compared to an average employee. But other promises, like putting workers on company boards, aren't part of the plan. Labour said the proposals would not have stopped the scandals at BHS and Sports Direct. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, reports. Theresa May put corporate governance and reform of the nation's boardrooms at the top of her agenda for government. The Prime Minister said the behaviour of BHS and Sports Direct bosses had helped to put it there. The government's consultative paper spells out how bosses have paid themselves ever more through relatively lean business years. 
In 1998, a chief exec in the top 100 UK firms was taking home the equivalent average earnings of 47 employees. Last year, the same chief execs were trousering the equivalent of 128 employees on average earnings. While FTSE 100 bosses' pay has been quadrupling from an average of a million in 1998 to more than four million now, the share index for those top 100 companies bobbed along barely increasing at all over the whole period. To remedy all this, Theresa May has been promising big change. I want to make shareholder votes on corporate pay, not just advisory, but binding. So if you're a boss who earns a fortune but doesn't look after your staff, I'm putting you on warning. This can't go on anymore. A change has got to come, and this party is going to make it. But today, the government announced those annual binding votes might not apply to all parts of a boss's pay package, might not apply to all companies. And this, a week after the Prime Minister climbed down on her own commitment to having employees and consumers represented on company boards. In Whitehall, they talk of an agonising and late climb down on these issues, and they talk of a pushback from employers' organisations, angry at the Prime Minister's rhetoric. There was a real alarm in the business world, wasn't there, after that speech at conference that the Prime Minister gave, some of the stuff the Home Secretary said? I think what we're hearing now is welcome. It's pro-enterprise. That's what we needed to hear as business. You've been beating down the door in the meantime. No, not at all. But we have been having, you know, good conversations. It's a new government. It's not surprising that, it, that those conversations need to take place. And you pulled in them into line. line. No, not at all. We can never pull the government into line. The Prime Minister diagnosed the, the problem correctly, and it's that people have lost confidence in business. People have seen BHS, they've seen Sports Direct, they've seen top pay spiralling out of control. I think there's a real danger that the Prime Minister and the government responds to vested interest in Britain's uh, boardrooms, and what they lead to do is listen to ordinary working people, listen to the voters, and, and do the right thing, which is to put workers on boards and drive through a real wholesale reform of corporate governance in this country. 140 days into her premiership, the Prime Minister is finding it hard to deliver policies that match the high-voltage rhetoric she feels matches the public mood. Gary Gibbon. A lot changed after the Brexit vote, quite apart from Brexit. Not least, we've got a new government and a new ethos that the economic rules have to change. They've been tilted too far in favour of the well-to-do and have left hard-working, just about managing families behind. Now the big question is whether this government or anyone else has an idea as to what to actually do, apart from making speeches about that. Well, tomorrow we'll get a clue. The government is going to publish its green paper on tackling what it sees as corporate excess, including excessive executive pay. Will it force companies to reveal the gap between their CEO pay and that of their average worker? Will the government insist workers should have a role in the boss's remuneration? The truth is we've been banging on about this for some time. It's executive pay generally. It could be argued that the bosses are creaming away money that should rightly go to the shareholders. That shareholders Even I have had cause to talk about it. This was Newsnight 18 years ago. Well, a lot has changed since then. But chief executive pay has carried on up. In fact, it's several times higher than it was back then. Bosses seem very good at controlling costs, except the costs of bosses. Now, this is recognised as a problem by fans of capitalism as well as its foes. Quite a bit has been tried in those intervening years to curb it, and yet nothing seems to have quite worked. I look, I think there's been a succession over five or six years of paying outs that have just not been in anyone's interests. Uh, some of the banks, I think, paid out disgracefully to their top executives. I mean, there was a time when one or two of them were paying three times more in bonuses to top executives than in total dividends to all shareholders. And that means, you know, the pension funds of which you and I are ultimately the beneficiaries. First on everybody's list of what to do is to force disclosure, shine a light on what is happening. Companies have long had to reveal directors' pay. It was enshrined in law in 2002 and beefed up under the coalition by publishing this pay ratio of the ratio between the, average, the um, total chief executive compensation and average worker pay, it will make companies think very carefully about um, how they're paying their chief executive and senior directors versus the average employee. I think it'll give real focus to that area, which is currently, I think, been neglected. 
The second approach is to give more power to shareholders to thwart pay. The so-called say on pay gives shareholders limited power, a binding vote on the remuneration policy every three years. But those voting shareholders are generally fund managers, looking after our money, but who are wrapped up in a city culture of big salaries. In the case of BP earlier this year, 59% of shareholders voted against the chief executive's £14 million pay package and the company simply ignored that vote. But I think by getting shareholders involved right at the beginning of the process, they can in fact give them the power to, to effectively approve the remuneration package, a shareholders committee, before it even gets to the AGM. You can deal with these issues early before it becomes a very public confrontation at the annual AGM. It might take really draconian ideas like pay caps to work. Simply not done, old boy, not in this country. I'll tell you why this is so difficult. Basically everybody, the whole sphere of society that's involved in setting executive pay has a shared sense of what the going rate for the chief executive of a big company is. It's in the millions of pounds. That culture or norm is really hard to dislodge. No single company believes it can do it on its own. Somehow you have to reset everybody's expectations. So is the 2016 attempt to rewrite the rules going to be any more successful than uh, earlier ones? And is executive pro pay the problem most people think it is? Joining me now is Sam Bowman, Executive Director of the Adam Smith Institute, and Mariana Matskato, Professor of Economics, Sussex University. Mariana, is it a problem, first of all? It's a problem, and it's been getting worse. I think that's very important to say. So you just said that you did this program 18 years ago saying that there was a problem. Well, 18 years ago, the difference was 45 to 1. The average worker earned 45 times less than CEOs. Today, it's 180. So have these CEOs become that much more productive, or has something changed in well, terms of... Maybe it of was wrong before. It could be that they... Uh, sure. <laughs> but this is about corporate governance. I think it's very important not to sort of criminalize this as though this is sort of just bad behavior. We have to ask, what have we allowed in a particular <clears throat> type of capitalism? Because let's not forget there's varieties of capitalism. So we're talking about shareholder you know, driven capitalism versus something called stakeholder capitalism. So Huawei, number one company in the world in telecoms, is a cooperative and doesn't have this big difference. Ericsson as well. So, you know, these are companies that have decided to boost share prices, to boost stock options, to boost executive pay. That's a particular decision related to corporate governance. And we have to question this corporate governance model. Right. Sam, you come from a slightly more libertarian angle. I'm assuming you'll say it is up to the shareholders who own the company to decide what the remuneration is. Am I right? Uh, you are right, but I think a more interesting question is, is Mariana right? <laughs> is this increase in the ratio simply mm. because uh, shareholders have become more lazy? Um, maybe these uh, committees have become better at giving themselves money? Um, or perhaps it's because things like globalization mean that having a good executive is more important now than it was 20 years ago. In fact, we can look at the evidence. We can look at the uh, share price changes when CEOs either die or leave their company suddenly. And we can see whether that's changed more dramatically in the last couple of years than it was before. And it turns out, when we look at the evidence, that over not just the last 20 years, but over the last 50 years, there's been a very steady um, upward change in uh, the importance of a CEO to a company. Well, you're not value. telling me, though, that these so, people need to be paid. So they might yes, be worth I a am. great so, deal, but you don't need to pay them that in order to get them to do the job. I mean, so Martin Sorrell earns in 45 minutes. So Martin, in 45 minutes, Martin Sorrell earns what the average worker earns in a year. So That's the, not excessive. The, important, that the importance of a CEO is absolutely huge to a firm. Um, if you were a Sony or a Samsung 15 years ago, Samsung decided to invest in smartphones. Sony didn't. Samsung's now much larger than Sony because it made that right call. But CEOs, mm, hang on, CEOs, okay. the decisions they make matter enormously. And we look at share price changes. When Angela Arendt's uh, stepped down from Burberry. It was an unexpected move. Burberry lost half a billion pounds in value from that one day. Okay, so answer that one specifically, because that is actually quite interesting, isn't it? So you're not going to dispute the fact that they make a big difference to corporations, presumably? Mariana. Many companies that have this excessive difference, and I do think it's excessive, yeah. have not, during the time that this pay difference has increased, become more productive, 
produce better products. In fact, if you just look at the pharmaceutical industry... It's not industry, a question of the company, it's a question of the executive. Yes. Is the executive more important now than they were 20 years ago? And because of things like globalization, yeah, but the this answer is, again, is yes. So this goes back to our theory of where wealth comes from. So the stakeholder model doesn't say that executives are not important. It just admits that there's other people that are also important. For example, the workers, you know, who do sit on the board in many parts of the world. This isn't just a big idea that Theresa May had, you know, Scandinavia, in Germany and Austria where I was just last oh. week. This is, this is an admission that there's different collective actors that take part in okay, making but, companies successful. But so if this you're, is not if, about executives you're right, not then, being important. If you're right, then yeah. all stock markets, yeah. all institutional investors with billions of pounds on the line, but other people's money and their own money, they're wrong. Can they're, I just they're, say, wrong yeah. they're wrong okay. in when a can, good CEO is judging thing. that Adam firm Smith, is less Adam valuable. Adam Smith, that your institute was named after, the Adam Smith Institute, what he meant by f the free market was free from rent. Free from rent. Look, what we're actually look, talking we're debating, about is we're massive rent-seeking. Rent you know I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We're what. talking about value creation as though these executives have, over time, become more important for the creation of value. And that's what the evidence tells us. Right. It, okay. It doesn't. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. The evidence, the evidence, the evidence tells us that guys, getting a good guys, CEO just, matters just, more now than it used to. We've got about 90 seconds left. I did want to get into the practicalities. of. So let's just accept for a moment that your objective is to narrow the gap and to get executive pay down. Um, we can carry on afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the kind of things you've heard about, publishing ratios, putting a worker on the remuneration committee, do you think that matches the scale of it? Well, it's not a worker. <laughs> it's trade unions, yes. They Whatever. are very important yeah, yeah. in negotiating and also thinking about future investments. They should be on the boards, not just to limit the pay. This is also where it always sounds very defensive. Think of it more offensive. Think of the opportunities that are needed. So when profits of companies are reinvested in the future, so in productive capacity, in innovation, this is good for society as a whole. Yeah. And so workers on the board would be fighting for that, as opposed to things like share buybacks, which have right. increased workers on massively, the board and that's workers, rent I think workers on the board are terrible policy. When it's, it's been done in Germany, it's failed massively. One of the big reasons Volkswagen went down was because the board's uh, atmosphere Please. was poisonous. The chief executive of Volkswagen collaborated with the union representatives and drove up costs. It was a huge failure. Instead, we should be giving, we should be encouraging firms to give their workers shares in those firms, so that the workers have a stake in the firm's Last profits as much as his shareholders do. The, the other specific idea: publishing ratios. Does it carry the risk that if you publish the ratio of the executive pay to the average, they'll try and outsource all the low-paid staff, as lots of companies do? in order that the average pay of the remaining staff looks higher. Is that not a, this area is replete with perverse incentives, isn't it, Marion? So again, why should they publish these you know, payments of the differences? Yeah. Not because this is criminal behavior, but because this is an indicator, perhaps, of something right. that's happening in these companies that is problematic. But what we should actually be then focusing on is what's happening in these companies. Are they investing their profits in the future? Okay. Uh, growth and we have record level hoarding, record level financialization, which is again using profits just to boost your stock options, which is the main way that these executives get paid. Again, it's not that executives aren't good. This isn't good, you know, good guy, bad guy thing. This is about. It's a question of how important the executive Sam. is to the well being yeah, of the firm. There's no evidence that there is plenty of evidence. Sam, you're a libertarian. You. you know, you're generally seen as on the right of politics, but libertarian. Are you worried by the, the drift of where society's going? Because clearly, populism, Governments coming in everywhere are saying, we've had enough, we're not going to take it anymore, we, we mean business. Well, I am, but we keep hearing about post-truth politics. I mean, this is somewhere, the evidence is very clear that executives matter a lot. And what the government's doing, maybe Theresa May believes in what she's doing, I think more likely is that she's trying to win some votes. And it's really sad that very, very few people, even executives themselves, because they're worried about how it looks to the public, are willing to stand up and say, just look at the evidence, look at the importance of, of good CEOs because of things like globalization now to the well-being of their firms. There. This is a tautology. I'll just say it's a tautology. Okay. They're getting paid more, so Thanks. they're more valuable. Gotta... That's wrong. <laughs> That's Thanks. not what we're saying. We're saying the value <laughs> of the firm indeed. is Thank changing you. more when the CEOs yeah. die Thanks. now. Okay. <laughs> I've been getting away with it all my